Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this Wednesday night Bible study for the Church of the Eternally Secure. The Eternally Secure! Did you say Eternally yes. Secure? What does that yes. mean? Uh, eternally Secure. Uh, well, for many people, they don't really understand that the gospel is eternal security. Yes. Uh, if a me too, me too. If a person can understand that the gospel is the message that uh, the promise of eternal life from Jesus to you. And, and you know, and then of course the death, burial, and resurrection is how he accomplishes it. And so, but if you don't believe that his death, burial, and resurrection comes with the promise of eternal life for you, you don't get it. So right. We're the church of the eternally secure. Amen. Uh, <laughs> welcome everybody. Uh if you're um Watching for the first time, uh, I hope this Bible study is, is a, a blessing to you. Uh, you can also uh, participate in our chat room. Uh, it's, for those of you who are in the chat room, uh, welcome back. Some of you are here every time in the chat room, and uh, especially uh, the moderators in the chat room. I depend on you so much because uh, trolls exist, and, and they there are people who hate uh us as individuals and they hate us as collectively as a congregation yeah. so they will come in and try to run what we're doing so we depend on the uh, moderators in the chat room to uh, uh, deal with that but if you're here for the first time uh i want to welcome you and if you're a moderator you know if you see someone that's new uh, make sure you take some time to welcome them too uh, and also luke this is not a place to argue our core foundational beliefs. This is a, a fellowship for people that already believe the gospel. Exactly. exactly right. Yeah. So I had to vent a little bit yesterday in a video about that, that issue that uh, this is a church a service church program, a Wednesday night church Bible study. And you wouldn't, you would not go to your local church uh, and, uh, on the Wednesday night Bible study and then stand up and argue that the church is wrong about the deity of Christ or how you get saved and, and eternal security. Uh, if you, that's not the proper place, you'd be escorted out right away. So if you want to uh, join the chat room and if you think we're wrong on our core doctrines, uh, uh, you're welcome to listen. Uh, but this is not the place for, for someone to challenge our core doctrines. But I do invite you to participate in the dialogue tonight. We're, we're in the book of Romans, chapter 16 now. If you haven't seen all the previous studies uh, on the book of Romans, I urge you to go back and watch it from the beginning. But right now, we're going to begin with chapter 16, verse 1. But before I do, let me ask uh, Brother Cripps and Sister Renee to say hi to everybody. Sister Renee? Yeah, let me uh, turn my camera back on. Hey, everybody. It's Renee Roland. If you don't know me, the channel is just simply Renee Roland, R O L A N D. Um, and I contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. It is uh, eternal life is a free gift received by faith in what Jesus did for us alone. He gets all the glory for saving us. Doesn't have anything to do with what we're doing. Uh, but because he saved us, we should be serving him. But you don't have to do a thing to be saved except receive the gift from God, because that's just how good our God is. Mm -hmm. So it's good here to uh, be back with you guys here tonight. All right. Thank you. Uh, if you don't already uh, know about Sister Renee, I hope you'll subscribe to her, her channel. Uh, she's our untwisted sister. She, she sure will, is. She'll help you understand all the verses that uh, trouble people and that seem to... Uh, contradict uh, salvation by faith alone, but she's the one that can help you understand those in context. All right, Brother Cripps. I actually uh, had dinner with my uh, godfather, I've been known him my whole life, and his wife, and I told him about both of you and the whole twisted, uh, the untwisted sister thing about Renee, and he said, wasn't that a rock group from like the 80s? <laughs> yes, it was. And that's where Brother Luke got it from. And <laughs> it, just, it, it really, uh, really took, uh, I think. So that's an amazing thing. Um, hello, my name is Jason Cripps, and I'm part of a channel called True Story Live. We come on Sunday nights at 9 p.m. And we just like to have people come and uh, have discussions and uh, without division, without derision, 
and um, it, it it's okay if you don't believe, and it, it's okay if you believe and have different uh, viewpoints. But we just like to bring everyone into discussion about that. And I'm of course on this show every week, which is my absolute delight to be with two people that uh, just love the Lord and uh, know what they're talking about. And uh, I'm just humbled by a lot of a lot of their comments, and to be a part of this is is a wonderful thing. And Monday nights with uh, Talk and Doctrine and uh, Monday's Milk. And then you can see me on other shows. You know, I try to say yes to everything. I did some things with Mike W. Uh, Peanut Head this uh, last night. And so um, I just I just try to get out there as much as I can. And I love fellowshipping with you guys on Wednesday nights. So thanks a lot. Look forward Amen. to it. Amen. Okay. Uh, okay. I just remember I do need to make a couple of announcements very quickly. Uh, first of all, Brother Michael contacted me and told me that uh, uh, regrettably they've changed his schedule at work. He can't get off early enough on Wednesdays now to join us, but he thinks it's going to change because of the business and the place he works at is going to be sold or go out of business. Yeah. So it's probably a temporary problem. He, he wants to be with us on Wednesdays, but uh, also he's making a video uploading it right now about uh, our uh, asking if we help with uh, Sister Renee's needs. Yep. Uh, if you haven't seen my video on that yesterday, I hope you'll watch that. The other thing is, uh, uh, we have a great brother uh, I've worked with quite a bit uh, over the last year, uh, brother Jason Jack, uh, brother Doctor Jason Jack, and uh, uh, he's he's worked with me on uh, several projects now uh, in, in these group discussions, collaborating with me, and we want to do more. Uh, so he's going to join me next Friday for two programs. We're going to have two programs on Friday. The first one will be on the Talk and Doctrine channel. It's going to be in the time slot that goes to Fundamental Fridays. But uh, the subject will be the Flat Earth. <laughs> Jason is one of the reasons I've been converted to the Flat Earth. Uh, so Jason and I, uh, Brother Cripps, uh, Matthias, and uh, David uh, will be on that program. Uh, Daniel won't be because he's leaving town that day. So that's that will be the subject of discussion on that time frame. Immediately following that, <laughs> I hope I have the endurance to do the two programs back to back, but immediately following that, Brother Jason Jack and I are going to have a discussion and we'll open it to others who want to join the panel and discuss it. Uh, talking about his idea that uh, we, the year right now is not really 2019. This is really 1,019. The Gregorian calendar added a thousand years uh, to our our calendar, and that sound may sound crazy to you. It did when I first heard it, but he's already made a lot of videos about it, and uh, it, it's pretty compelling. The case he makes, I think. So uh, we're gonna take some time to discuss his his ideas, theories on that. Uh, that'll be next Friday during the you know the, not not this coming Friday, nine days from now. Okay. See, uh, before Brother Luke, just I want to say one quick thing. That's why I like to be called by my last name for this very reason, because we'll I'll be on that Friday broadcast and there'll be two Jasons then. How are you gonna keep us apart? Crips and Jack. That's right. Yeah. yeah. But which one of you guys are on that Halloween movie? Both of us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they use different actors for each one. So I would do one movie, he'd do the other one. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the verses. Uh, uh, the KJV, uh, Romans chapter 16, verse 1. I commend unto you, Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Centria. Uh, Centria. What's the verse? I'm sorry. 16 verse 1. Okay, 16. I'm on um, one chapter back. All right, thank okay. you. Now, 16 verse 1 ends with a colon, so it really should be connected to verse 2, but I'm going to stop in the middle of it because there's something very profound in the first half of that thought in verse 1. I'll read it again, the KJV, and then if you read this in all other translations, I'm pretty sure they are in agreement on this, at least in the Amplified, uh, and when we first did 
uh, Romans chapter one, before we started, we did an introduction. The entire night was was laying the groundwork for the study of the book of Romans. And this point that we're gonna discuss right now was brought up and there is historical evidence that uh, the, there is a preface to the book of Romans that, that uh, was written and, and it introducing Phoebe. And this is the way she's described in the preface or the introduction. I, I, let me see. Uh, um, now I introduce and commend to you our sister Phoebe, a deaconess, that is a servant of the church, at Centria. Mm -hmm. So here in the Amplified, and I think you'll find in other translations, yeah. and, and also in the preface that we talked about in the beginning of Romans, as I said, uh, there is historical uh, uh, evidence that Phoebe was considered to be a deaconess. Men don't like that. That's why they changed it. It's the same Greek word used for every man that's translated deacon in the King James Bible. Yep. But when it came to Phoebe, they translated it servant or minister. Yep. Yeah. Now, you know, I'm a KJV firstist and I rely on the KJV, um, but I, I think it's wise to look at other translations and maybe get some insights. But uh, uh, I, I believe that uh, the, uh, the position that Phoebe held yeah. was not just a... Uh, a servant, a, a, um, a, a woman that was could not hold any kind of office in the church. I believe Phoebe held the office of deaconess. Well, he entrusted her to send his letter, to read the letters to everybody. Yeah. Stand up and speak in a church. Did people hear that? Yep, I a heard A woman it. was told and sent by Paul to stand up and speak to others in the church. Amen. And the reason that I'm pausing in the middle of the, this thought, the verse one and two is one thought, but the reason I'm pausing is I don't want to go on until we address this question about who Phoebe was and, and her standing in the, the, the church. And, and um, I guess it's important because I remember about a year and a half ago when Sister Renee started participating in in this congregation and and, and she was uh, in, in the position that she has now uh, uh, helping us to teach the congregation um, there was a tremendous backlash against not just renee but just the whole idea of any woman thinking that she how dare she teach how take how dare she take any kind of uh, position right and she's just supposed to shut up and listen yeah and uh so um uh, of course, there was a little division over that. Some people uh, can't tolerate that Renee has this position, and that uh, uh, and so here we see in the scripture that Paul considers her to be a deaconess. Yeah. Uh, Renee, and, and uh, you, you tell me more before we ask Crip, Brother Cripps about this. Well, yeah, the um, I didn't pull it up, but the the word that's used there is dianokolos or something like that. I'm, I I can't pronounce Greek, but. <clears throat> Dianokolos, where we get the word Greek, uh, in Greek, we get the word deacon. <clears throat> and that's the exact word used for her. And I think it's important that because a lot of people take those verses in Timothy, not understanding the context of them, that a woman should be in silence. I suffer not a woman to teach or usurp authority. But the authority was saying that women were created before men because women gave birth to men and therefore Eve came before Adam. That's what was being taught. And there was a great fertility goddess cult going on. It was great was the goddess Diana of the Ephesians. Yep. And so there was, that was the context of it. But still to this day, uh, most men will say that God means that a woman can't be used to, to speak at all. Like we can't teach, we can't read, he can't reveal things to us. But we, we know that's not true based on scripture. Um, I don't profess to be a pastor. I, I think men need men to help them grow as spiritual leaders. You know, I think a man should teach a man how to, uh, you know, rule his life. It says that uh, uh, scripturally, but it, it, I think it, it is a little silly to go to the extreme that I've seen it when clearly you're supposed to take the full counsel of God. And we see here that Paul 
in trust very important messages to the churches and has uh is sending her um in his name to read his letters to these making her rounds traveling to the churches to speak on his behalf and that next verse there's a word there and i was just going to give everybody the meaning but i won't get in, uh, ahead of us okay i want to talk about how the letter would be read to and go back to this prosopopoeia but let me ask brother cripps to give, give me his, his thoughts first yeah and i'm not i want to try not to go on a rant until after we get past uh verse two but um, <laughs> look you just this is where people cherry pick scriptures so when paul's uh, talking about the scriptures that Rene referred to um, and explaining what it was that he was speaking against. It was not speaking against a woman being a, a part in the church. It certainly is not speaking about Rene doing videos to untwist other people's <laughs> twisted scriptures. It's ridiculous. And the attacks, I, they have to stop. They absolutely have to stop. And I know they won't just stop because I'm saying stop, but it's absolutely asinine. Um, I could so, see if I was teaching something really heretical or something. You well, know? even then, you still have a right to to, to teach. It's not Paul's not saying that women shouldn't teach. That's not what he. What my point is before we even get to verse two, you have to look at scripture as a whole. And it, obviously, Paul's not contradicting himself in one verse saying that women shouldn't teach, and then in this verse he's talking about Phoebe like she's been a help to him, which we'll find out there was more than that. I think right. the word Renee wants to explain will will clear that up coming up. Uh, but on this particular verse, he's making it clear that we're supposed to treat her as a sister, and they use the word servant, but we'll use deaconess as well of the church. It's very very clear. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, if if you go back and uh, say about nineteen months ago and start watching the earlier broadcasts of the Church of the Eternally Secure. And you uh, look at some of the reactions. A lot of people have made videos against uh, all of us in the con uh, all of us leaders in this church, and uh, Renee more so than probably anybody, only because she is a woman. Mm -hmm. And she was told she had to keep her mouth shut completely by some. <laughs> Others said. She's only allowed to speak if she's tell, telling the gospel. Other than the gospel, she couldn't speak about any other things in the Bible. And so if somebody's got a question about the gospel, I can't use a scripture and explain that verse to them. Yeah, like I that's can't. How, that's how absurd. But what I want everybody to know is that uh, if, if you're new to this Bible study on Romans, I can't repeat this and emphasize it strongly enough. Watch the very first video in this series, the introduction to the book, and then watch the chapter one and two, because um, we introduce a concept called prosopopoeia. Uh, you probably don't know what that word means. I didn't know about it until I learned about it really about a year ago. And uh, but it's a, it's a it's a um, oratorical technique that was used at that time in history. And, and the the theory is, and I'm convinced this is correct that Paul used the, the, the technique of prosopopoeia. And, it, and so that means that if he wanted his letter read using prosopopoeia technique, he was entrusting Phoebe, not just with transporting the letter to a place, but to read the letter, to go before the congregation and read the letter. And in this case, it had to be read in a particular way in a dramatic fashion, playing two parts, reading the parts that Paul was teaching and reading the parts that are not really Paul's thoughts, but the thoughts of the false teachers making accusing Paul. If, you, if that sounds strange to you, it's because you didn't know about it. Hardly anybody knows about this. But chapter one and two in Romans, you'll see it in a totally different light if you watch those videos. And I, I think it'll make perfect sense. I think Brother Cripps and Steve was with us in that study. Uh, they were blown away uh, that when, when we read it in the way that I believe it was intended to be understood. But Phoebe was given this great responsibility, not just to read a letter, but to read it in a way so they understood this Part of the scriptures is not what Paul's position is. This is Paul's position. And so it was a real big responsibility she had to be able to communicate that as she read it. 
Uh, all right, uh, go to verse two unless anybody has more to say about that. Okay, uh, verse two in the KJV says, they, I'll read one and two together because it's supposed to be together. I commend you unto you, Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant or deaconess of the church, which is at Centria, that ye receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you. For she hath been a succorer of many and of myself also. Okay, Brother Crip, why don't you go first this time? Actually, I would love it if Renee wants to go over a word, so I would appreciate it if she could go first on this. All one. right, all right, Renee, if you're ready, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the, the word succorer or succorer, uh, it means someone who gives help in time of need or distress or difficulty. <laughs> so she uh, not only spoke on Paul's behalf, stood up and spoke, wasn't silent, spoke in the church on Paul's behalf. Uh, she also helped many in times of distress and difficulty and need. Uh, it's clear here that that's what she did. Let me look at that uh, verse specifically, that you receive her in the Lord as become a saint and that you assist her in yep. whatsoever business she has need of you. Sounds she's like she's given a of myself also. It sounds like she's been elevated to some kind of position of authority. It sure does, doesn't it? They just uncovered a first century church, Brother Luke. No, it was a second century church that was a house church in Israel owned by a woman. Yep. Just yeah. uncovered it. And it sounds like he's telling the congregation uh, of this Roman church that when she gets there, they are be to be subservient to her. Right. Give her what she needs to do the business required for the church. I'm going to read uh, verse 2 in the Amplified. It says, that you may receive her in the Lord with love and hospitality, as God's people ought to receive one another, and that you may help her in whatever manner she may require assistance from you. Boom. For she has been a helper, <laughs> including myself. Jason. <laughs> so she, he's sending her there and making her the boss over them. Yep. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of that? I mean, the, the, uh, I'm, I'm talking about the people that there are people who are going to be angry even listening to this. Well, they can be they angry. Like, they don't like the fact that here we can see that Phoebe is elevated in a position of authority and to, to this church in Rome. Paul sent her to be there in an authoritative position. And yep. the deaconess. Yep. Whole list of women too, like Junia. They thought Junia was a man's name, so they used male uh, <laughs> references to yep. her in yep. the first first edition. Yeah. yeah. All right, brother Cripps, you uh, you wanted Renee to go first. Uh, you have uh, acquiesced to our deaconess Renee. I certainly have, and will do in every case. Uh, that that's the bottom line of it. Um, this verse is bearing out exactly what what I've been saying and what I've been trying to contend for when it comes to women that know what they're talking about. They've done enough uh, scripture reading, and Renee certainly has done more, in my opinion, than some of these other people that are preaching on YouTube that are, that, that are men, that they don't have the same level of knowledge of scripture. But uh, particularly with the verse, I mean, she explained what the word meant, and this is Paul saying this, guys. So the same person that we're supposed to believe in, in other verses is saying, ah, don't let a woman teach. That's the way they they interpret it. Like the women aren't supposed to be have any kind of teaching positions. Um, there, there, there are churches that, that uh, uh, well, Jen, Jennifer knows someone that went to a church and the, the person wanted to be part of, uh, uh, of uh, teaching a class or something. They wouldn't let her even do that. They wouldn't let her teach a uh a, a Bible class in the morning, like Sunday school. It, it's absolutely ridiculous. So, yeah, my church only allows women to teach the children. And and even the boys, once they get to be like past fifth grade, women are allowed to teach them. Exactly. And Hendrick said in just now in the live chat said, I think it's a waste of re resources. Absolutely. Um, God made uh, men and women with different qualities. He made them different for a reason. 
But when you have a woman that takes the time to study scripture and is contending for the faith, you lift them up, you assist them, just like Paul is saying here, assist her in whatever business she hath need of you. That's the attitude that we need to have about anyone like Renee that's out there against a lot of attacks and against people that are saying all manner of evil things about her and against her. We need to do everything we can do to help her. Absolutely. And I, for one, will. And I'm frankly, I'm tired of the attacks. I'm absolutely tired of it. It brings her to tears and puts her in a, in a place where um, she's she's contending for the faith and trying to untwist scripture. And then she's also having to deal with all these comments from people that, that they should be the ones keeping their mouth shut. Yeah. Hey, a viewer in the chat room said that in scripture, uh, she is a prostatsis which means a leader and representative of the church. That's the that's the Greek word used, pro, prostatsis or prostasis. Mm -hmm. Yep. Representative. Yeah. Representative. Yep. She at least represents, and Paul's making very clear, assist yep. her mm -hmm. in whatsoever business she hath need of you. How dare how dare Paul send her to go stand in front of a congregation and speak? How dare he? He probably he probably was attacked and accused for that. I'm surprised he didn't do a whole letter about it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's go to verse three. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Wow, man. Wow. That is a powerful uh, um, a statement he's making about what they have done. And, and when you think about it, they've laid down their necks. That means that they have risked their own lives. Yep, that's what it means. Yeah. And it's, it's Priscilla and Aquila. So who's Aquila? The husband. My question then is, if Priscilla is the wife, yeah, well, there you go. He lists her list. first. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's listed first. She's the one that's charged with it, given this authoritative position, not the husband. Yep. Well, it He's says never... that she actually more excellently explained the gospel to someone or something somewhere in scripture. I don't know that off the top of my head, but it says that. She assisted in helping explain it better to someone. Yeah. Clarifying it. Well, I think Paul is making a point here by putting her first. Absolutely. In this in this grouping of verses where he's, he's talking about Phoebe. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's intentional. Yes. Um, uh, now, let me, let me read three and four in the Amplified, see if we learn anything. Greet Prisca and Aquila my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their own necks, endangering their very lives for my life. To them, not only do I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. <laughs> That's a pretty big influence. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, there's really not more that much more I guess to say about that, except that it's uh, um, now. Let me ask you. Uh, uh, so, is Priscilla and Aquila are they accompanying Phoebe? Is that the impression you're getting, or or is are, are Pri Priscilla and Aquila part of the Roman Church? I know I'm not sure about that. Uh, that's a good question. Okay. Renee, do you any idea? What now? Oh, Priscilla and Aquila. Are uh -huh. they accompanying Phoebe, uh, or are they in the Roman church? I think they're already there. Yeah. They're already there, because remember, uh, they were kicked out of Rome, and they were staying on the outskirts of Rome, and Paul was staying with them. They were tent makers. So I'm assuming they're already there. Yeah, that's right. They were the, the tent Roman makers church. Paul worked with. I forgot about that. Uh, okay, so let's go back to the KJV verse uh, 5. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Oh, <laughs> salute my well beloved Epinetus, who is the first fruits of Achaia unto Christ. 
Mm. Uh, you know, there's uh, in the book of Acts, there's a, a lot of references to, to the the church in their house, the church yep. in their house. And That's what we're headed for. Identified, I guess, by their the name of the whoever was hosting it. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I'm happy to tell you that apart from this internet congregation we have here, the Church of the Eternally Secure, the best church experience I had in my life was when I had a church in my own home for seven years. Amen. Uh, and we, we really did try to model it after what we read in the book of Acts, how churches were in people's homes. And it worked beautifully. Wonderful. I uh, got the point that eventually... That Everybody goes their own ways because of various dogmas that, that are discovered. If yeah. you talk to if you talk to any person long enough, you, eventually you're going to come up with a, some disagreement on a theological subject. Uh, if I if I posted let's say twenty questions right now on theology, mm -hmm. every question was true false, and I had every one of us answer the question true false true false you're probably not going to find one person where all the answers mirror yours exactly that's probably a fair point you're going to find that at some point on some theological subject there's a disagreement yeah so how do you deal with it well after my experience when in my home church and after seven years finally everybody having to go their own ways because of discovering a disagreement here and there uh uh, I realized that in the future, uh, I had to have established, I learned this, this was a principle. It's not in my original idea. I think this is an ancient idea. Uh, I don't know who coined the term, but it, somebody said, uh, in essentials, unity. Yeah. In non-essentials, liberty. In all things, charity. Mm -hmm. And when I, when I uh, first heard that, I thought that's exactly what is needed. And so I had to figure, well, what, what are these essentials? And uh, I decided the essentials, uh, my conclusion is that Jesus is eternal God Almighty. He's not merely a, a great man or a prophet. Um, G, uh, salvation is not earned by our religious efforts. It's received as a free gift by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, and Amen. eternal security. Uh, Amen. And that was my conclusion from the scriptures, that these are the essentials of Christ's unity. And of course, uh, I, at a certain point, I uh, met Matthias, and he was on a parallel track. He had come to the same conclusions, and, and also was using this unity, liberty, charity creed. And yep. we thought that it was uh, it was uh, faith that we we join forces and and, and uh, do this ministry works together. So this is how this all came about. But my point is. Uh, unless we have this creed as a foundation, we're not going to be dogmatists about a lot of things. But there are three dogmas that, that are so important that we must insist we all have to agree on these three things. And then apart from those three things, all other things, they don't rise to that same level of importance. So we should give liberty and freedom to everybody so that when we go through that true quest true false questionnaire and we find a disagreement we can say well that's not an essential question so therefore uh we, we we're free to disagree let's mm -hmm. talk about it and learn each other's viewpoints and compare notes and see what we can learn you know try to work it out together mm -hmm. and uh, that's the approach that we have in this congregation i love it but that's what happened in my uh my local congregation but we wanted to model it after the the book of Acts what we thought the church was in the first century. Completely agree. Uh, all right. Renee, any thoughts on that before I go to the verses? Nope. Go right ahead. Okay. Uh, 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 verse 6. Greet Mary. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I do have a thought on that. I didn't realize. The, uh, I just wanted to clarify the first fruits of Achaia, or however you pronounce that, that's an area in Greece. Uh -huh. Akashia or Achaia or something. So uh, evidently, Epineus was saved. He's the first fruits. I guess he's one of the founding people in that area of Greece. Mm. So I just uh -huh. wanted to explain what that was. All right. Well, let me read it in, in the Amplified then before we go on. It says, also greet the church that meets in their house. Greet my beloved Epite uh, uh, Epinetus, who is the first convert 
uh, to Christ from the West Coast province of Asia Minor. Oh, it says the West Coast. Okay, good. All right. Uh, verse 6, then it says, uh, well, let me go back to the KJV for verse 6. It says, um, greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen, and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles who also were in Christ before me. Oh, oh no. <laughs> wow. Wait a second. Jenny oh, is a woman's oh, name. Oh, it sure is. was in Christ before him? Yeah, amazing. <laughs> no, sister. Don't you know that Paul only is say that Paul was the first one in the church? There was oh, no wow. Christian until Paul? Wow. Boom, boom. Well, history. they're Jews, too, because he said, my brother. Let me see. Hold on. It says, uh, my kinsmen. So they're also Jews. Or at least yeah. they're Hebrew. They're Hebrew believers. Yeah. 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 Now, uh, it doesn't take much to set me off on a rant. There are a few subjects that I have a great passion for. And partly it's because I feel it's neglected. No one is standing up for these things, so I, the burden's on me. And that's, I don't, I don't know ahead. anybody who's preaching against hyper dispensationalism. Go ahead, brother Luke. I'm calling on all, all the, the the preachers that we know. Come on, speak out against hyper dispensation. I call it Paul onlyism. I've, I've made a lot of videos. I have a playlist titled Paul onlyism debunked, and among many things, this verse here proves one of their doctrines wrong that Paul was the first person in the church. What? Oh, yeah. That's a position of, of hyper-dispensationalism. Well, you can just with, take anything too far. The, yep. the just, church started with Paul's conversion. There were no Christians before Paul. Yep. All okay. things must be done with sound mind. In order, sound mind, never way over here or way over there. You should have some balance. You shouldn't be that, like... I mean, it's crazy to me when people take stuff that far, you know? Hey, Brother Dave is uh, saying, I, I speak out on it too. Hyperdispensation is bananas. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Brother Dave. Brother Dave, I'm happy you're here. Hey, Brother Dave. I by, the, by, by the way, some of you may not know Brother Dave, and uh, uh, I am so impressed with his preaching. I, I, just, I just proclaimed him as the best preacher on YouTube today. We'll have to check. Well, wow, out. brother Dave, I gotta check you out. I see you on my channel. I don't. Everybody, I didn't sub to you. I don't think I sub to you. Everybody, go sub to him and 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 start watching his videos and see the preaching is different than teaching. Preaching means you are speaking with great passion. Sometimes I get in a preaching mode. You get you get me worked up and I start preaching. Okay, teaching is a more calmed, uh, um, a mental type of thing of communicating. And so, uh, Brother Dave is, uh, he's not only preaching the real gospel, but he's preaching it with great passion. And, and it'll really get you worked up listening to him preach. So, please, everybody go subscribe to Brother Dave. But, uh, yeah, Brother Dave, I'm happy to hear. I, I'll have to see your videos against hyper-dispensationalism. I call it paul onlyism for an obvious reason, is that they only believe we should uh, listen to Paul's writings. And uh, for so many more. But this verse here... Uh, is a proof text against Paul onlyism and hyper dispensationalism. It says that uh, salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen, and my fellow prisoners. We got to talk more about that. Who are of note among you, apostles, who were also who also were in Christ before me? Paul is admitting right here there were Christians before he became a Christian. So take that hyper dispensationalist. Okay, go ahead, Dr. <laughs> uh, I mean, what I mean, there's not much to say. This is all greeting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's all greeting. But yeah, I, I've got well, what do you think of this part here when it says um uh oh God, um that they were they were saved before he was? No, the uh, the well, you can talk about that, but I want to know about this prisoner, my fellow prisoners. Uh, oh, yeah, they were probably uh, either that, that he uses this in both ways. 
literally when he's been imprisoned and, uh, and also calls himself a prisoner of Christ as if he, he's, uh, he, he, that he's bound by uh, Christ to serve him. Like he feels a, a need to serve and preach the gospel that he has submitted himself into the bondage of service to Christ. He, he uses it in two ways because he talks about himself as a prisoner, literally in prison too. Cause he talks about his bonds. Yeah. You know, now, I know that he went to prison in Rome, of course, and then he didn't get out. He uh, he was executed. Uh, I think he was in prison before that, but I don't. I can't really speak on off the top of my head. Do you, do you know anything about that? Uh, no, I don't know. I'd have to check it. I'd be scared to say something wrong. Yeah. Um, but fellow prisoners, I think in the sense here, I think he's talking about that they're in bondage to service to Christ as well. You know? That they are, uh, uh, their lives are in constant service to, to Christ. That's what I think he means here. Although it could mean literal, they could have been put in prison. But he's saying salute them, so they're apparently not still in prison now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it is true that Paul was a literal prisoner, imprisoned. I mean, look for we know he was in jail in. Uh, um, Acts 16, verse uh, 31, 32, you know, uh, in the, the Philippian jailer. Philippian jailer, yeah, that's he right. He was jailed with Silas, but uh, I don't know if you could call it prison. He was imprisoned, at least for, uh, in, in the jail. Uh, I, I think he may have been imprisoned uh, some other place. I'm not positive, but we know that he is imprisoned in Rome eventually. He's warned against going there. We'll get there eventually in one of these epistles when the, there's the account that he's told Actually, I think that was in Acts where he's warned, don't go, go to uh, Rome and insist on going anyway. Uh, all right, let's go to, uh, let's read in the Amplified just to see if uh, there's anything else that we can learn from it. Uh, it says, um, greet Andronicus and Junius, my kinsmen, and once my fellow prisoners. So he says once here. That's the Amplified says once my fellow prisoners. So I think it's the, they're interpreting it that uh, yeah. they actually were in prison together, in, in jail together for some period of time, yeah. uh, who are held in high esteem in the estimation of the apostles and who were believers in Christ before me. That's the Amplified. But, oh, I didn't comment on your thought, Renee, and it is true. Paul was literally in prison. Mm. Also figuratively, but it was, a, it was called he, what he called, I think, um, um, a um, bond a, servant, didn't he? Bond, yeah, bond, the bond servant, servant to Christ. Bond servant is someone who willingly submits themselves right. into a form of slavery by right. Choice. Right. It's by the choice. it's the modern day equivalent of having a uh, uh, ankle bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> they keep track of him. He tells them where they, where he's going. <laughs> call on him any time to come back. Well, Paul talks like he doesn't have a choice because if right. he doesn't, he will be in misery if he's not serving the Lord. He can't do anything but preach Christ and him crucified. Amen. Yeah. That would be a wonderful place to be in. Yes. I can't help it. I, I can't shut up. I can't. Well, I hope you don't, Renee. Don't shut up. Don't keep your mouth shut. Okay. And then you got uh, uh let me see. Uh, in verse 8. Greet Amplius, my beloved in the Lord. Salute Urbane, our helper in Christ. And Stachus, my beloved. Salute Apellus, approved in Christ. Salute them which are of Aristobulus' household. Salute Herodian, my kinsman. Greet them that be of the household of Narcissus. Oh, Narcissus, what a name. <laughs> Which are in the Lord. Verse 12 is salute Tryphena and Tryphosa, who labor in the Lord. Salute the beloved Persis, which labored much in the Lord. Salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. Salute uh, a, a, a syncretus of uh, Phlegon, Hermes. Pacific. All these great names, man. They're named uh, after Greek gods, too. Look, Hermes, Hermes. Got, uh, 
a couple of uh like Perseus is named after Perseus. Yep. There's a bunch of them named after these uh gods. Olympus. Yeah. Well, uh, either Greek or Narcissus or Roman. You know the Greek gods, and the, there's also the Roman gods, and they're parallels but different names. Yeah, yeah, the same thing. And the brethren which are with them salute Philo Philogus and Julia. Nereus and his sister and Olympus and <laughs> all the saints which are with them salute one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. Amen. Okay, that's through verse 16. And uh, uh, we have to remember here that this is the last chapter of the book of Romans. And uh, this study, <laughs> uh, I don't know if we'll finish the whole thing tonight or next time, but it's a uh, it's been a long time. We've been on this book for a long time. We've been very, very thorough, and we've covered a lot of important ground. There's so much in this book. I've said this many times. This is one of the most important books in the Bible for two reasons. There are some proud, for profound truths to be learned from it, and there's also some really great uh, traps to fall into if you're like a Calvinist can use chapter 9 to ensnare you into Calvinism. Uh, there's uh, chapter one and two. People can misrepresent Paul's real intentions, and uh, there, there's there's po possible pitfalls. So this is a very important book. Many people tell me it's it's their favorite book. Yeah. I think the consensus for most people is I think most people agree with me that the Gospel account of John is the most important book in the Bible. If I had to save one, if they said. The whole Bible is around the world won't exist anymore except for one book, and you get to pick which one is saved. I will say I'll save the Gospel account of John, um, but uh, and then after that, I'd probably save Galatians and Hebrews. Uh, but uh, Romans is a greatly loved book, but as I said, it's profound and it's very dangerous in some ways. People easy to come to the wrong conclusion. And now we're nearing an end of this study on Romans. And he's, he's, he's kind of summing, he's just saying his goodbyes at the end of this letter at this point here. Uh, Brother Cripps? Uh, yeah, I don't have any anything to add. Uh, if you're asking me about the uh, the verses you just read, it's just he's making announcements and stuff. Um, I do think it's interesting. Uh, it was just a sign of the times of all the different names, the Roman or Greek gods that everyone's named after an Olympus, you know, Mount Olympus. I mean, there, there lots mm -hmm. of stuff happened there. Um, so it's just the, the way it was back then. I mean, there are all these, all these Greek and Roman gods and people were naming their kids after them. And it's just interesting that, you know, they didn't all change their names after they were saved. It was okay that they, they had those names. Good point. Gods. Good point. And, uh, nobody freaked out and said, Oh, you got to change your name. Otherwise you're, you're, it's the same as you worshiping a Greek God or, or a Roman God. Right. It's ridiculous. Let's use some common sense out there. Yeah. All right, sister. Uh, this, uh, these, all these greetings and rec he's not just greeting, saying greet them. He's recognized them, and he's recognized each one of them in a little different way, showing that he knows each one of them in a way that he can identify a particular quality that he yep. wants to recognize in them. Right. Saluting, saluting is a big deal. Yeah, yeah. acknowledging what each of them has contributed. Yep, that's that's fantastic. I think it's important. Because it shows us how they all work together as one body. Amen. Uh huh. Uh, okay, I'm going to go to. Uh, this is a very important verse. I'm posting uh, the next portion here, brother Cripps, for you in the private spot space here. Cool. Thanks. Uh, we'll see. Okay, so we got that through the, through the end of the chapter. I don't know if we'll get through it all to this quickly or not, but um, okay, to uh, verse in the KJV, we're on uh, verse 19. Uh, no. No, no, I'm sorry. What are we on here? Let me uh, see. Seven, uh, 17, I think you did 16, salute one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. Yep, so 17, brother. Okay. Uh, yeah, 17. Yep. 
I didn't post 17, did I? Okay. Yeah, you posted it earlier. I posted it in the Amplified, but not the KJV. It didn't I'm, I have it, sir. Do you have it? Yeah, I have 17 through 19 in, in the uh, KJV. Okay. Uh, Up toward the top. Yeah, I must. Let me just read it from the my uh, the page that's on the uh, okay the other one. Okay, seventeen in the KJV is uh, now. I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Mm. Praise God. I'm going to read eighteen. That they go together. For they are, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. But their own belly, oh. and by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the temple. Mm. And what were they teaching, Brother Luke, Brother Cripps? Yeah. Uh, Law these, for salvation. Yeah, yeah. These uh, these are the people that I believe uh, the Bible calls the thorn in the flesh of Paul. That were following Paul around, going to all of Paul's churches. And saying Paul's a false apostle, he's yep. giving people a license to sin. He's saying you don't have to follow the law, you don't have to be circumcised. I'm telling you, that's all, all a lie. You can't be saved by faith alone. You've got to become a Jew, get circumcised, follow the laws of Moses. All right, well, you can't get saved unless you do. And that's what we're doing. And they would write letters in his name and say things like the resurrection of past already. You missed it. We're going into the time of God's wrath. You missed it. Yep. Shipwrecking the faith of some. Yep. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we see that uh, Paul is charged by many uh, as a false apostle. And, and even today, there's a large group of people that will not uh, listen to Paul at all. Um, and that's because uh, Paul clearly is, is saying that if you add any religious works to the to the grace of God, it, you, it's no longer grace. They throw them out. They throw them out. They don't like it. Yep. Uh, but here, how does this? Uh, how can we apply this uh, verse here? Um, verse eight. Uh, let me see. I think it answers a big question too, guys. Verse 17, I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. Mark and avoid them. Yes. We, we, we say this a lot, and I'm, I'm pretty good at it. Yeah. I, I follow this, this, this uh, decree by Paul. Um, I, I don't have any tolerance to these people. Yep. Yeah, I know a lot of people that say, well, let's, we could always be ready with an answer. And Oh, it's just semantics. It, no, it's not. No. Mm -mm. Uh, yeah, they're they're yeah. not of God. It tells you right there, Brother Luke. Yeah. They don't serve Jesus. Paul, G Jesus said that uh, some people should be considered swine. Now, whenever I bring this up, some people say, oh, no, that's too harsh. Well, don't don't blame me. You better talk to talk to Jesus about that. He's the one that says these are swine. In other words, we were to think very lowly of these people. And, and who are they? Uh, these are the people who are causing the disturbances. They're just wanting to argue, want to come in and cause strife in the congregation. They don't have ears to hear. They're just, they're just to argue. They don't have, they're not really. Spiritual saved. treasure, spiritual yeah. treasure is lost on them. Yes. Yep. Don't give them the spiritual treasure because they'll trample it. Yes. Yep, the pearls. Yes. And yep. so we're, we're, we're being taught that we should have discernment. We should be able to recognize if someone doesn't have ears to hear. Yep. How much, how much does it take for a person to realize that you're talking to a wall? They're not there to have a conversation. They're there just to argue. And if we recognize that, we need to put our foot down and say, my time is better spent list trying to seek someone out who actually wants to listen, who really wants to hear the good news, instead of wants to argue that you're a false teacher, you're right. teaching a license to sin. And are they men of God that are just a little off or confused? No, they're not. They're not. It says right here. For they are such, these, they that are such, serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. 
-hmm. It says that. They, they don't serve him. So they're not men of God that are just a little bit confused. They are in opposition to the Lord. They aren't serving him. Yes. If you're preaching anything other than the gospel of Christ, that it's all what he did, you are not serving the Lord. It yes. says it right here. Well, that's why we, we had a person uh, join us a couple of times recently in the chat room arguing against our core doctrines. And, and people in the chat room were trying to deal with him. And I put my foot there. I said, no, you got to go. This is not, you cannot come in here and say that, that uh, salvation by faith alone is not true, that you, you absolutely have to have religious works accompany it, or else you're not really saved. Yeah. I'm not going to tolerate it. And, and if we tolerate it, then we're guilty. We're not following the teachings of Jesus and of Paul. Paul says these people, we mark them and avoid them. Jesus says, don't cast your pearls to them. They're swine. They're not there to listen and learn. He says, dust off your feet and move on. How many times do we have to hear from Jesus and Paul before it's going to sink in and we put our foot down and don't tolerate these people? And why are they doing it? They're, for greed. For greed. It says they serve their own belly. Yeah. How many people can be marked off your list that are on YouTube or, or, or have uh, uh, po popular uh, uh, websites and stuff? Uh, can you mark off your list by that right there? They fill their own bellies. All they're yes. doing with their yes. own money and they're, they're getting a jet and, you know, so they can, quote, unquote, spread the gospel. And they're not even preaching the gospel. Or not even preaching the gospel. You're right. Yeah, Absolutely. They preach prosperity doctrine and it's for their own benefit to fill their own belly and we can just cross them off the list. And Funny how that yeah. prosperity gospel doesn't work to the poor in Africa. <laughs> it doesn't work for a lot of people yeah. here in America either. I mean, you know I, what I'm saying? Oh, like, I, do. I do. That's not their core. You don't hear them going over to Ethiopia or Uganda to preach the prosperity gospel. They're or going China. to wealthy, wealthy countries or China, which has a huge Christian population. They're being persecuted over there. You got to understand in some of these countries, Believers are actually being persecuted, not where they're saying, oh, you can't say Christmas. It, I, I'm going to upload something tonight, guys, is, uh, something that's going on in Mexico that our missionary from Mexico wrote us tonight, and it makes my skin, my hair stand up on my arms. Yeah, it's happening. And, and guys, it's eventually coming to an uh, area near you. It's coming yes. toward you. I already got the bill in California to try to make Christian literature hate speech in yep. illegal. That's right. They're working on it. So. Yep. Uh, right. brush up on your scripture and make sure that you know a lot of it and keep your Bible closed. Cause eventually, I mean, I, I hate to say it, but eventually they're going to take our right to do shows like this away. Yeah. It's coming. Okay. Let's go to verse 19 in the KJV. It says for your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad therefore on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that, which is good and simple concerning evil and the god of peace shall bruise satan under your feet shortly the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you amen all right i don't know who to call on because if i say renee or if i say crips you'll say no renee should go first <laughs> <laughs> Not this time, because I was going to comment on on seventeen and eighteen. I didn't. I didn't uh, get a chance. Oh, you didn't. I'm sorry. See, I'm oh, oh, confused. You go, please go. Let's go back so you can do that. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, on seventeen and eighteen, I want just want to say Victoria Sarton. When we were talking about the Victoria Sarton in the chat, um, uh, mentioned the Hebrew rooters and that they're they're. Uh, I forget what word she used. They're cringing or they're gasping. I think she said gasping. And I have an example of, a, of someone that I, I thought was a brother and very, very close that, that went over to the Hebrew rooters. And um, I used to read his, uh, his, his writings and his, his uh, uh, blogs and, and things like that. I was really encouraged and edified by him. Um, I, I thought he might be a little bit legalistic in some ways, but, you know, that, that's okay. And at least in the essentials, we were on the same page. And he, he totally, um, I mean, he made it public and talked about how he had, has seen the error of his ways and that uh, now he, he's a Hebrew rooter and he uh, agrees with what they're saying and that he's put himself and his family back under the law and stuff. 
And um, I, I had to avoid them. And I'm not saying, oh, great, look at, look at me. I'm, I'm great at doing this. I'm just saying it was, it was hurtful to me. It was very, very difficult because this is someone I thought that understood the same gospel and believed the same thing I do. And then you find out that they don't. It's, it's hard. It's hard, especially if you're close to someone. But this is the command. Um, he, he's saying avoid, mark and avoid, mark and avoid. And it's hard to do, but you have to do it because you're letting that stuff uh, around you. And even if it's if it if your faith and your understanding of scripture is strong enough that it doesn't affect you at all, it's still affecting the people that are hearing it. Yeah. Now, obviously, uh, you don't just mark and avoid everybody the very first time that you you have a disagreement on something. Mm-hmm something you try to win them over and explain them and but if you see that they don't have ears to hear come on yeah use your brain use your intelligence yeah. if you see that they're only going to argue i've got a guy at the gym uh for uh, this last week every time i'm at the gym this man wants to argue with me that jesus isn't god and you got to get water baptized he's church of christ and, and, uh, and we're going back and forth with scriptures as I'm trying to work out. And I'm there and I said, look, I, I don't, I, he, I said, I don't want you to feel I'm getting angry. I'm not angry with you, but I, I'm very passionate about this. That's why I'm again animated as, I, as we're talking. I'll keep talking to you as long as, long as we're cordial, you know, but um, he's not going to change his mind, I'm sure. But mm-hmm. as long as we can have actually have a dialogue, I'll keep talking to him. But if I if it reaches a point where I discern what it's absolutely uh, my time is not good, well spent on this at all. I still am holding out some hope because I'm pointing out a lot of verses that he he's not aware of. And he's trying to explain them away. Not very well, because because the verses are clear. Uh, but um, I doubt I, I doubt he's going to uh, ever believe correctly. Nope. But but we, we keep having the dialogue. But if, if you if you recognize that your uh, just a uh, time is being wasted your time should be spent on someone else who actually wants to hear then find someone who uh, wants to listen instead of someone that just wants to uh, argue sure a lot of people it's just a matter of ego too they they, they got to prove they're right instead of seeking the truth well especially when they become a hebrew rooter then that's all they do what they do is they go on other people's posts that used to be friends and the, the the person makes a really 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 good point or a post, and they come in there and that was that really what you think? Because blah blah blah, and then they vomit all their their law and uh, use scripture to try to try to show how wrong they are. That's exactly what they do. I, I just have a low level of patience for it, honestly. Uh, all right, uh, verse nineteen in the Amplified says, "For the report of your obedience has reached everyone." so that I rejoice over you, but I want you to be wise in what is good and innocent in what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Mm. Uh, The wonderful grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. That's 19 and 20. Uh, Before I talk about though, I want to acknowledge something here in the chat room. I saw Brother Brother Dave said something that shocked me. he says that uh, Brother Yankee Arnold is, is his pastor and that he was just put on some list. Let me read it. It says, my pastor, Ralph Yankee Arnold, was recently placed onto a very highly followed website and listed as a, quote, easy believer heretic, unquote. Yep. Yep. Well, praise God. That means he's got the right gospel. I love Dr. Arnold. Yeah. He is a great, he, he. He uh, replaced Dr. Hank Lindstrom when he went on to be with the Lord. Amen. He is an amazing man of God. I I love him. And he contends for the gospel. He said John MacArthur and Ray Comfort aren't even qualified to stand in his yeah. pulpit. Yeah. My, uh, my, uh, my favorite uh, preacher, Brother Dave, I said you're, you're the best preacher on YouTube right now. <laughs> my favorite preacher of all time is, is in this line of Yankee Arnold, Hankins, Lindstrom, and then just before him, Brother Curtis Hudson. I've got a playlist, Curtis Curtis Hudson. I like Curtis Hudson, too. You go listen to his preaching, but they're all absolutely correct on this gospel message. This, this J. Vernon McGee, too. J. Vernon McGee's right. 
Uh, I haven't listened to him enough to, to, to know, but I'll trust your judgment, Ray. But um, yeah, Yankee Arnold is, is, uh, is uh, of all the people who are really prominent, like I don't get too upset about the little people on YouTube that don't have a big audience. You know, I don't like to mention their names. Me either. Talk about the false teaching, but not the name name them. Me either, because I don't want to give them any uh, credit for people to go over there. Nope. They have a giant audience like uh, MacArthur, Piper, Washer, right. Comfort. Uh, um, these people are need to be named, uh, because they have uh, such influence over a lot of people. Right. And, but but on the other hand, we have Yankee Arnold. He probably has one of the biggest audiences uh, for someone who's preaching the true gospel. Yep. Uh, so we want to we want to support him. However, JD Farrakh preaches right too. JD Farrakh. JD Farrakh. <laughs> uh, there are some good ones, uh, and if and if you are preaching the truth, you're, the same thing's going to happen to you. That happens to all of us. That happens to Paul. Going to be called a false teacher. Yeah. Uh huh. Of course, it's a license to sin. Don't, yeah. don't you know? If God still loves you and you, you're a sinner, then that's just a license to sin. Yeah. Okay. Verse twenty-one in the KJV says, "Timoth." Tima, Tima, Timotheus. Timotheus. <laughs> Timotheus. 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 My work fellow. And that must be Timothy, who is uh, uh, the, Timothy, the book Timothy is written to. One and two. Uh, Tim, Timotheus, my work fellow, and Lucius, and Jason, and That's me. Peter, and, and uh, my kinsman. Salute you. Hey. I wanted to say something on on number nineteen. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I forget to get? I'm no, okay. if, if you, don't you don't normally, normally do that. that. You don't normally do that, brother Luke. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go hey, ahead. um, your brain is a sponge, and somebody wrung it out again. <laughs> uh, is that I wanted to mention something here because uh, for your obedience is come abroad unto all men, and obedience obviously in reference to them maintaining the truth of the gospel, right? Because it just mentioned before not to, you know, mark those that avoid, uh, uh, mark and avoid those that cause divisions and teach contrary to the doctrine they were taught. And it tells you in another section what the doctrine of Christ is. But it says, I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. And then it says, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And I'm always telling people, because they're always saying every day, you just tell people to keep on sinning. And look, I don't have to tell people not to sin. I mean, first of all, the strength of sin is the law. Secondly, I'm not a pastor. Uh, thirdly, everybody that everybody knows what's good and evil. I mean, it should be common sense that once you trust Christ and now you are claiming the name of Christ, and holding his name, you know, it says, let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Well, that's just common sense. We don't, I mean, you should just know the basis of, of what's good and evil. You shouldn't yeah. hurt people. You shouldn't lie to people. You shouldn't rip them off. You shouldn't kill people. You shouldn't sleep with their husband. I mean, these aren't things we even need to discuss, is it? I mean, it, just keep to that which is simple, good and evil. We know that. You know, so I just wanted to mention that that I don't see where, why they think that's so necessary. Everybody knows where they fall short. Mm -hmm. You know. You know, I'm I'm glad you, I'm glad you pulled us back because I really there's a lot here that needs to be said about 17 and 18 that I I neglected to say. So let me read it again because I I have some thoughts that I think are important. 17 and 18. Now I beseech you, brethren. Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. Okay, so he's saying the doctrine he taught us. I believe he's talking about the gospel. Okay, if someone's teaching you another gospel, this is all the, what, the account of what happened in the book of Galatians. And uh, he here he's mentioning here in Romans also that uh, they're everywhere, all Paul's churches, he's communicating with them. There are all these false teachers coming in and trying to ruin his work and, and preach a false gospel. And he says, mark them and avoid them. Then in verse 18, it says, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly and by good words 
and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Now, I believe this phrase here, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. I believe that sorts my, supports my position. And I know you, you, Renee, and also Cripps agree with this. We talked about it. I believe people hear the gospel and believe and get saved. They believe the simple gospel. Well, you got three three places in Scripture, Brother Luke. Three it, where they hear it, it's mixed with faith, and the Holy Spirit falls. Three episodes of that. And they they they're believers and they're saved. And, and uh, whether it's in the Bible, these these accounts, or we see it here in, in this time and place in history, uh, we we see that people get saved and they're a babe, and then they go to a, find some church. And if they go to a big church, they're going to find out that it's probably a lordship heretic church. And so what they do is they don't have the tools to defend the gospel. They heard the gospel. They understand the gospel. They believe the gospel. They're saved. And yet they are not. Uh, they don't have any theological study under their belt. When, the, when, when they go to the lordship church and they encounter the person that's a lordship heretic, and they start throwing verse after verse to them to support the lordship heresy. This babe in Christ is not equipped to show them the error of it, and, and, and as Rene does, untwisting the scripture. If, if they were with Rene and they went into that church, then they would hear the defense of this gospel against these lordship heresies, but they don't have Rene. They're not equipped to deal with it. And so they're overwhelmed. I've said I've compared it to being a fighter. Brother Leo Larson, he teaches martial arts, boxing and self-defense. And I say, Brother Leo, what what if someone half your size with no martial arts training got in a fight with you? What chance do they have? No chance. And it's the same thing with a babe in Christ who understands and believes the gospel, but they don't they, then they're now they're encountered with all these trouble verses. These are called problem texts. They're problems for us. They're problems for all of you. We've studied and we've learned the context and we've learned how to answer them so that so that, we, that our faith is not shipwrecked. But the babe who doesn't have a defense, they go there and they're overwhelmed and they have to succumb because, because uh, they think, well, these people have studied the Bible for 30 or 40 years. I don't, and they're giving me these verses that say, uh, well, Book of James says you're you're not justified by uh, uh, you're you're justified by your works and not by faith only. They don't know how to defend themselves against that and twenty other verses, so they succumb and they say, "Well, I guess I didn't understand it right," and they get into apostasy. Mm -hmm. They're still saved, but they're apostate. I can't tell you how many people. I know here in our congregation who have gone through a period, I believe they got saved and they're a babe and they get into lordship and become apostate for a period of time. Until well, they, they listen to false teachers. We warn them, don't listen to anybody with the and, wrong gospel. And, and, and then they account, encounter your channel, Renee, and they write me a letter and say, I was a lordship -er for because of this and Renee straightened me out but they oh. I believe Paul's talking about these people right here when he says verse uh, 17 they're causing divisions and offenses uh, they're, they're uh, contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned so That's the right. gospel that they learned these people are coming in and teach them a different gospel and he says for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ but their own belly and by good good words and fair speeches you see yep. a lot of people they they're, they're overwhelmed by oratory by passion that's why if they listen to someone charisma like Paul, charisma Paul washer Paul washer is, is is given this great speech and he's in tears and there's all Dallas this, and, and Dallas so you're not really saved you're not saved I care about you I'm crying for you and you need to get saved and if you don't have a changed life you're not saved don't deceive yourself and they've succumbed to these passionate orators and yes. and Paul says here they have uh, uh, Good words and fair speeches, they Amen. deceive the hearts of the simple. The hearts of the simple. 
These are the babes. Yes. The hearts of the simple, I believe, are the babes in Christ. Yes. That's and how. those that, that are zealous now, they love God. They want to do what's right. And, and they're, they'll listen to anybody probably that, that mentions the name Jesus. Yes. You know, and, and uh, it's really important. That's why every, at least I do. And I believe you all do this. I tell everybody, don't believe me. Check what I say against scripture. Check yep. it in context. Because if I convince you because you like me or I'm charismatic or it don't, don't do that. Because somebody better than me is going to come along and convince you of something else. You got to check the scripture. Always. All right. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, verse 21 and through the, some of these closing uh, greetings here. Uh, uh, unless you, you Crips. Uh, I'm good. Anything else on, on that? Because I believe I, I, uh, I made a grave error uh, not, not covering that uh, when we went over those verses. Well, I, I, I agree. No problem. You covered it. Let's let's move forward if we can. Yeah. Okay. Verse uh, 21, KJV. Timotheus, my work fellow, and Lucius, and Jason, and Sosipater, and my kinsman, salute you. Uh, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, salute you in the Lord. Gaius, mine host, and of the whole church, saluteth you. Erastus, the chamberlain of the city, saluted you, and Cordus, a brother. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. Now I think he's saying, I gotta stop here because the the the, the hyper dispensations that Paul always said, uh -huh, see, yep, all saying my gospel. Yep. Thank you. We need to clear this up. He's got a different gospel than, than everybody else. No, so, he doesn't. Okay. Uh, his gospel is no different than John and Peter and Jesus. Nope. Okay. And uh, he's, uh, but he says, my gospel, because he's saying, this is what I taught you compared to these heretics that are coming in here and teaching you another gospel, false doctrine that he right. just referred to a few, few, few verses earlier. He says, so. Uh, uh, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. Uh, by the way, the mystery, uh, Paul is, defines the mystery in another point. He says the mystery he refers to is the fact that uh, the Savior is not just for Israel and the Jews. Right. The Savior is for the whole world, Gentiles too. Yep, the Gentiles are, yep. And that's another thing. His gospel was to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Peter is to the circumcision and he's to the uncircumcised. I mean, yeah, to the uncircumcision. Yep. Uh, that's another way. His gospel is the same one, like Brother Luke said, but it's the audience that it's geared toward that's different. Now, 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. And the obedience, what is the obedience required for salvation besides Christ's obedience? Faith. That is obedience. Believing it is the obedience yep. to believe the message. So it's interesting that all these people preach obedience for salvation but they haven't done the first work nope. they haven't even done the one work of obedience which was to simply believe the gospel and if they believe the gospel they wouldn't feel the need to change it or add to it or redefine it yep. so it, it's interesting that he explains that obedience is faith mm -hmm. richard uh someone uh, hendrix has asked me to unhide uh richard arena well i i hit him for a reason i'm sure but let's forgive him and give him another chance where is he in this chat room i think uh, it was an accident i think it, it was, was an accident, accident. yeah, yeah. Uh, uh jen was trying to delete another person's comment above it and well, accidentally I, think, uh, I can't unhide him in the chat room because he's not there so i'd have to have his actual youtube channel to go to to do it so if someone can post his youtube channel here Give me the link to it. I'll go there and I'll, I'll uh, unblock him. Okay. That's what's going to be needed. 
Okay, perfect. Okay. You got, you got uh, to... right. we, I covered a lot of ground in those final verses because I wanted to bring this to a close because yeah. it's time to end. But uh, go ahead, Brother Cripps, uh, on those final verses. Yeah, no problem at all. Great. Uh, so now to him, the power of the established gospel. I mean, you covered that pretty well. Um, and I just wanted to mention, you're talking about hyper dispensationals, and they actually say that you can't get saved. You know this, uh, Brother Luke. Wait, hang, hang on a second. Bible literalist is saying you can unblock him here. What do you mean? Uh, where it says Bible literalist, I can block him there? I thought Bible literalist was uh, Paula. I'm clicking on it and nothing's happening. Those three, oh, there it is. Remove, report, hide user. He's not being hidden or unblocked according to that. Bible literacy is not. She said go to community and then community settings. I can't do that now. That's too complicated. Uh, to try to find him in the community. I have 500 people in my block page. I'm not going to try to scroll through <laughs> all that right now. Uh, if someone can't post his uh, YouTube channel here for me to go to, then uh, it's not going to be accomplished. That's the only thing you can do. Uh, all right. I'm sorry, Brother Cripps or Renee for interrupting you, whoever I am. No, that's me. Uh, I was saying that uh, they actually say that you cannot get saved by uh, Christ's gospel. The, the dispensation, hyper, I'll, I'll throw in hyper, hyper dispensational say that you cannot get saved by any other gospel other than other than Paul's. And I'm glad you cleared that up, Brother Luke. It's so important. Um, if people can get saved by by the uh, the four gospels. They can get saved by anything that has the gospel in it, not just what Paul said. I mean, it's so super important that people understand that. And it, it, it's frustrating to hear people uh, say that and, and twist things around. So I'm glad that you hit on that. Um, so 26, but now is made manifest by the scriptures. And, and you explained, uh, Brother Luke, how the mystery uh, was that the Gentiles were going to get a chance. And God was always going to do that from before the foundations of the world. That was his plan the whole time. And we all know that now. Uh, it just it wasn't revealed in, until this particular time. Um, and uh, I love the way that this ends. And also, Renee mentioned the, the, what obedience is, and I'm sure she'll say more about that if she if she wants to. Um, but I and, and again, the way that Paul ends his books is just in, incredible to me. To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Um, it's not for our own glory. It's not to fill our bellies. It's not for any other purpose except to give glory to Christ Jesus, on which everything is based. It's not of our own works. We can't do anything. We don't need to do anything. All the work's been done. Uh, all we have is the obedience and faith. It's just simply believing it, truly believing it is the point. I have a question, you guys. Yeah. In verse 22, it says, I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, salute you in the Lord. So is Paul saying, I am saluting you, Tertius, uh, so I, I, who wrote this epistle, am saluting you, Tertius, or is Tertius the one that physically wrote it because Paul's eyes were bad? I, I think it's the, the second thing. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's an important point. Um, um, there are, there are different viewpoints on uh, this idea of if Paul wrote it or it was written by somebody else. Uh, in, in some cases, they think Paul wrote just the very uh, end of it or uh, or someone wrote it all. It's all really, I don't think anybody can be really sure of that. I think it's safe to say, though, these are Paul's words. Yeah, it does sound like it. Describe them or, or whether uh, they, uh, they transcribed part of it or what. I don't know, but uh, these are the words of the Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, he's just thanking him, thanking him for all the all the uh, stuff he's done to help him out when when he can't couldn't write himself. That, that's all right. Uh, okay, so we got enough time now. We started about ten after uh, mm -hmm. uh, our start time. So uh, we got, let's take a, just a few minutes now to sum up our thoughts. And you know, this is the end of the Book of Romans, so let's yeah. sum up our thoughts on the study tonight take time now to st sum up your thoughts on the whole book of Romans. <laughs> i'm not asking too much brother Cripps. uh yeah um you were saying earlier you know if you could pick one book and i'm not sure i would be able to do that but romans is one that i would love uh love to have and i i shared when we were back in romans 5 i shared that romans 5 1 through 8 is my favorite passion in scripture 
and it, it definitely does uh, give us a better understanding of what the gospel is and, and how we get it. Uh, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith, where in his grace we stand and rejoice in the hope and the glory of God. Um, that, to me, that, that little grouping of scripture was the first one I memorized uh, in second grade uh, as part of the Christian school that I was attending. And everything I've been through, I never forgot that passage. And so when I had moments of, of darkness or moments of uh, where um, I, I was questioning things and, and uh, wondering uh, how things got so out of hand, I would always remember that uh, verse and remember how it was that I stayed connected to God and that um, because of what uh, Christ did, that I didn't ever have to worry about my salvation. I, e even if I was um, in trouble, if I was in the doghouse and suffering consequences because of my poor choices, that it didn't mean I wasn't saved. And I, it just has been a constant source of uh, help to me. But the whole book of Romans all together, there's so many different points. And I, I think it would take a long time to tell you all the different things that I, I can pull out of there that was useful. Um, but this has been such a wonderful study, and I'm so glad to be a, a, a part of it. And I'm even uh, more looking forward to, oh, well, Sopapia. And I'll, Luke, when it's your turn, um, that whole realization and, and looking at things in that way uh, was was huge for me. I never looked at it, looked at it like that before, and for me at least, in, in the theory of that, it helped me to understand uh, those passages better. And so that was one of the biggest things that I walked away from the study with, actually, um, in discussing it. Uh, so uh, I'm I'm grateful. I just want to say that and. Um, I uh, just can't wait to look at the next the next verses or uh, the next book. Okay, thank you, thank you, sister. Uh... Yeah, you know this book it it really touches on so much, and Romans eleven is so important in uh, God's plan for the nation of Israel and how He's not done with them, uh, and how you know He takes it to the Gentiles. There's a remnant of Israel saved now. But at some point, his focus is going back on that nation and keeping his promises made to the fathers. And uh, they're going to believe he's going to send all those evangelists to him that uh, we should not get puffed up and hate that nation um, because uh, God is not done with them, that we're, we're, we benefit from them being temporarily blinded. But we'll be much more blessed when they come to the truth. Amen. How much more will we be blessed, you know? Amen. Uh, and I, I'm really... I, I really believe um, anti-Semitism is a supernatural devil, mm. uh, and it's it's motivated many people to try to use into a extinction from Haman back in the Book of Esther to Hitler himself. You know, and it's a supernatural hatred. It has no place within the Christian Church. No place within the Christian Church. No place. And, uh, nobody is saved because of their blood genealogy or lineage. I'm not saying that, but God made a promise to Abraham and his natural descendants. Yep. He's going to keep that promise and he's going to bring them to the truth. They yep. have suffered. The Bible talks about how they are, are, are a horror to the people. They were scattered to the four corners of the uh, earth because of this and that they're going to continue to be persecuted even to the very end when God allows the nations to come against them. But you see, when they cry out for him, he shows up and defends her. Boom. So, uh, you know, uh, that's important. Also, Brother Luke was happy to uh, deal with the uh, issue of election here. You know, uh, are, are you elected to salvation? Are you chosen? Some are chosen to be lost. No, you're chosen to be. He chose the nation The Israel was elect. Jacob was elect to be the nation that the Messiah would be born through. He loved Jacob. He chose Jacob as the one the Savior would be born through. Um, so that was an important thing that we discussed, uh, trying to refute the false uh, uh, Calvinistic view of election, that they were chosen for a purpose, uh, but not to be lost or saved. Um and because uh, he says he's not willing any should perish, but all come to repentance and he'll draw all men unto him, Amen. not just certain special people. And it, although they'll say that it's unconditional, 
and it's just random, they all think they're one of them. You know, mm -hmm. you don't hear Calvinists going, too bad I'm not one of the elect, but I'm still a Calvinist. You know, they all think they're one of the special ones that are picked. So, um, uh, there's so much. The book of Romans, if you had nothing else in the Bible and just this book, you could get saved. Mm -hmm. and understand the doctrine and understand God's plan for uh, the nation of Israel uh, and the mystery given to the Gentiles and the future promises we have and how the body of Christ should work as a whole. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything in this, uh, it explains it's a well-rounded book. Uh, but you were asking which books would I choose? Mine would be the book of Hebrews because it, it so tightly ties up what the Old Testament was shadowing you know it, it shows us all of that uh and also the book of galatia uh, galatians i love that love that book all right so. i got my fan on is it, can everybody hear me okay no it's fine all right then uh all right well it's it, to try to sum up the uh the whole book i don't know how many wednesdays i don't know how many uh Wednesday night bible studies have been devoted to the book of romans it's, it's probably a lot i have to look through it sometime and see how many videos we could put to get through it all but there is a uh i i am just so happy to, that we were able to study this together and, and uh i believe i understand the whole thing much better mm -hmm. because of us working together to, to study and figure it out together amplifying it yes Amen. Uh, and I will say that um, there's so much the ground we covered. Uh, the theology for salvation is so clearly in there. And then um, also the, the teaching about uh, liberty. Uh, that, hey, uh, you're, we're free to eat what we want or celebrate certain days or not days. So you have the doctrine that, okay, here's the essentials. you got to get this right. All this other stuff. We have liberty, you know, uh, we're, we're free. It may not be beneficial, though. You may make some bad choices, but you're free to do it. So those, those concepts are in this book. Mm. Uh, but the things that uh, I keep, uh, I'm worried about is that uh, more so than anything else is chapter nine. And uh, um, that's, the, that's the foundation of Calvinism. And there's no philosophy in the whole world I hate more than Calvinism. See my playlist, Calvinism debunked. But uh, the problem with Calvinism originates with their misunderstanding and misinterpretation of Romans chapter 9. Because they don't understand what it's really all about, they uh, come to the wrong conclusion. And then that forces them to follow up by redefining other words in the Bible so that because these other words refute their doctrine, like whosoever, it's not really whosoever, world is not really the world, and, uh, and uh, so uh, and sovereign is not even in the Bible, the word sovereign. Uh, so um, it's very important that you understand Romans chapter 9. So I would say if, if you only watch one part of this whole thing, I say, please watch the teaching on Romans chapter 9 so you're not ever going to be deceived by the Calvinists. The other thing, as I said, is that something I just learned uh, really maybe a year ago is this concept of prosopopoeia. And so you'll hear about that in the introduction at the beginning of this study, and you'll see it how it actually plays out in the study of chapter 1 and 2, maybe even the beginning of chapter 3, if I remember right correctly. So I hope you go back and watch those parts and, and uh, understand that, because there are parts at the beginning of this that is attributed to Paul, and I don't believe these are Paul's thoughts and beliefs at all. I think that Paul is, is uh, showing us, uh, comparing what he wants us to understand, comparing it to what the false teachers, and giving you uh, the contrast. Since the false teacher is not there to have a debate with him, he directed Phoebe to read the letter in a way so that people understand this portion is the false teacher's position, and then this is my answer to it. So yeah. you'll get to understand that when you, if you go back to the first beginning of the study. There's a lot of God forbids in that one. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's it. Uh, oh, so let me just repeat this. Uh, these announcements. Uh, by the way, next Friday, after our next Wednesday, um, 
we'll continue. We're going to work our way through the Pauline epistles, uh, First Corinthians. I'm excited about it. First Corinthians. Love that, that book. book. I love that book. Yeah, that, that Corinthians has a lot of great stuff in it too. Mm -hmm. It's not as much theological as, as Romans, I don't think, but it, yeah. but it's very can be very very helpful to the church to understand the uh, you know particularly babes in Christ. Uh, uh, um, but also don't forget. Uh, to join us Friday night for Fellowship Friday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And then the following Friday, uh, nine days from now, <coughs> we're going to have the special program um, at uh, 6.30 Eastern Time on Talk and Doctrine on the Flat Earth subject. And then immediately following that at 8.30 p.m., we're going to have uh, Brother Jason Jack. He'll be joining us on both of those uh, programs on Friday. But Brother Jason Jack is going to uh, going in more detail, explaining us his his idea about this thousand years being added to our calendar, and that's a fascinating subject. I've watched all his videos on it. I'm fascinated by it, and I want to uh, pick his brain more. and And uh, I'd like everybody's help to try to evaluate this. Let's consider it. I need to research that. I want to know what would be the motive for it. Well, you to try to say it's taken Jesus longer to be here than it. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to offer the. The, the link to everybody that night so anybody can join our particularly right if you want to join the panel and be part of the discussion uh, we'd love to have you okay. uh brother Luke, can i make yeah. a quick announcement too about tomorrow night yeah sure uh okay so uh join us tomorrow night on true story live if you want to hear joseph's testimony and this is the same uh joseph that uh oh, good. tomorrow night uh 9 p.m eastern standard time and I appreciate it, Brother Luke, for let, yeah. let me make that announcement. Yeah. So. Uh, and the other announcement is, if you haven't already seen it, I, I haven't seen it yet, but Brother Michael, Ultimate Mordecai, texted me and said that he just made a video uh, to try to help Renee's cause. So I'm going to go watch that as soon as we're done. Yeah. I well, hope you all watch this video. Yep. Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody, for participating. See you next time. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.